To be an astronaut is something many of us only dream about. In fact, only 540 astronauts visited space during NASA's 30-year space shuttle program. We are honored to celebrate in person the male and female astronauts who represent all 33 missions of the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Collectively, all the astronauts with us today represent a total of 43 space flight missions spanning from Gemini 11 on September 1966 to STS-135 in July of 2011. Let me take a few moments now to introduce you to the space sailors joining us today. What an honor to have Dick Gordon with us. Dick served as pilot for the three-day Gemini 11 mission in 1966, during which he walked in space and in 1969, he orbited the moon as command module pilot of Apollo 12, inducted into the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame in 1993. Good morning to all of you, and thanks for coming out. And to Atlantis, welcome home. After serving the world for over 30 years, Space Shuttle has earned its place in history and has come to a final stop. Just a little less than two years ago, Commander Chris Ferguson, sitting behind me today, said these words, after a successful touchdown of the last space shuttle flight, STS-135, the space shuttle Atlantis. Today, they are just as appropriate. As we celebrate Atlantis' final stop, but not her final mission, here at the Kennedy Space Center, we could not be more proud of having Atlantis with us today, and, and really looking forward to unveiling it for all of you to come see her. Uh, as you heard John say, we had a little soiree last night, and the astronaut families and those that worked on the shuttle and the astronauts and to see their faces when we showed them Atlantis was a memory that will last for all of us for a lifetime. We're going to show Atlantis to you as the way the astronauts saw her in space in her finest hours as she just left the space station, just pulling back and ready to begin her journey home. Kennedy Space Center is the only place in the world you'll actually see a space shuttle tilted to one side. Is payload bay doors open? By the way, that sounds like a really simple thing to do. Works great in zero-g gravity. Not quite the same here on Earth. Today, joining us in our celebration are our partners at NASA, with which we could not have been where we're standing today. Many other contractors, and companies, and organizations, really too numerous to mention. We share in a proud moment with many of us here on the Space Coast who work very hard to keep an orbiter here, where orbiters have a home where all 135 missions launch from, right here at the Kennedy Space Center. And of course, we share it with those, men and women around the world, but particularly here in this country, who built the shuttles, who processed them, who flew them, who brought them home, and got them ready to fly again. We ride on the shoulders of many today, and to all of them, I say thank you. Celebrating the efforts of exactly what we want to do today. Celebrate the vehicles, celebrate the people, pay tribute to those. And to understand the space shuttle program, the pride, and you'll see when you get inside the patriotism of this country that Atlantis represents. Just as the future of our space program rides on the shoulders of the shuttle, and those who flew her and those who worked on her, it's made possible by everyone here who share the dream of manned space flight. They work tirelessly to make it a reality, and we will fly men from the Kennedy Space Center again into space. You know, Atlantis is a historic icon, an artifact. Only three in the world are space flown. We have one here. But we're going to put you in a little bit different position today when you go in. You're going to see what it's like to be an astronaut. You can land the shuttle. I did it yesterday. I did the easy version, not the hard one. You can dock to the space station. You can manipulate the shuttle's robotic arm. And if you're really good, you can take a spacewalk. These are just a few of the many interactive activities we have for our guests to enjoy 
making this the world's most comprehensive, most immersive, most exciting attraction devoted to a space shuttle. And keep in mind, as you're walking through today, it's not funded with a single dollar of taxpayer money, well, except for the orbiter, of course. When Atlantis landed for the final time on July 21st, 2011, it was said that its voyage had come to an end. But we'd like to think a little differently here. The Atlantis voyage has not come to an end. Atlantis, its new mission is just beginning, and that is to educate, to inspire a whole new generation of the space explorers. If someone in the audience today, maybe eight or nine years old, would be that individual that goes beyond low Earth orbit, goes way out into space, maybe to a planet, maybe to an asteroid, we want them to think about that today as they see this magnificent vehicle. So forgive me, Commander Ferguson, but I'm going to steal another line from you if I can. Last July, when Chris brought Atlantis home for the last time, he said, the space shuttle has changed the way we view the world, and it's changed the way we view the universe. We here at the Kennedy Space Center and the Visitor Complex know that our universe will be changed forever because of Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Endeavor, and our good ship Atlantis. Welcome home. Since Expedition 1 in 2000, the space station has continuous human occupation and has been visited by 204 men and women. Among those currently living on the International Space Station are Dr. Karen Nyberg, the 50th woman in space, and Christopher Cassidy, the 500th person to fly in space. Just downloaded from the space station, Dr. Karen Nyberg and Christopher Cassidy. Hello friends at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. I'm Karen Nyberg and this is Chris Cassidy of Expedition 36. We are thrilled to be a part of this momentous celebration. Atlantis holds a place near and dear to my heart and this exhibit embodies her accomplishments and legacy. Without the space shuttle program and the dedicated professionals who made it possible, we literally would not be here today. In fact, Atlantis delivered this very module we're speaking to you from. Piece by piece, this space station was assembled 220 miles above the Earth at over 17,500 miles an hour. Atlantis was critical in both assembly and resupply during her 12 missions to our orbiting outposts. Station is now a convergence of science, technology, and human innovation that is helping us learn what it means to be a space-faring people by demonstrating new technologies and making research breakthroughs not possible on Earth. Thank you for allowing us to be a small part of today's celebration. Welcome home, Atlantis, from the crew of Expedition 36. that right she said expedition 36 kind of hard to believe expedition 36 so that Charlie Bolden <laughs> John thank you very much um, Bob just asked how come you do what he says and you didn't do what I said um, I said to Bob it's because I'm the administrator and in NASA nobody ever listens to me at least John Zarella does so thank you Thank you. Um, I want to thank the Kennedy Space Center workforce, first of all. Uh, you all are awesome. I don't, um, we, we're bringing Atlantis home today publicly, uh, and I don't know how many people were around as we got to this day, um, but you know you have special people many of whom are standing out here in this audience, you know you have special people when they know that every evolution they do puts them one day closer to not working anymore. Um, and yet they work every single day tirelessly uh, because they believe in the future. And so when I say I wanna thank the Kennedy Space Center workforce, uh, people of the Space Coast, uh, today and into the future, I really mean that. You all are incredibly special people, and this nation owes you a super debt of gratitude.
You know, it's, um, it, it may seem strange to you that I'm talking to a vehicle when I say, welcome home Atlantis. But for everybody sitting on the stage, or most of us sitting on the stage, you know that it's not like a vehicle, it's like a person. Uh, I think everybody can think back to when you came down here for TCDT, the terminal countdown demonstration test, and you know, you go out to the pad and it's a vehicle. It's not doing anything, it's just there. And you get in, you go through a mock launch and everything seems okay, and then you come back two weeks later and it is really, really different because it's breathing. I mean, it's going And you thought you were okay until this thing starts talking to you. So when I say welcome home Atlantis, I mean welcome home Atlantis because for most of us on this stage, it has been a dear friend. It has taken us to places that we never dreamed and brought us safely home, and so it's very special. It's not far from here, Atlantis, where you launched so many times. There's no better way to launch NASA into our new era of human spaceflight than to take a moment to salute the men, women, and the flying machines that have helped our nation lead the world in space exploration. It's great to see so many former astronauts here, and I know people say, but there's no such thing as a former. Yeah, we're former, um, and we understand that. Uh, especially good to see my friend from, from Gemini and Apollo, uh, who shall remain nameless, and who promised that if I didn't call his name, he wouldn't say anything bad about me, Dick Gordon. <laughs> You and the men and women here at the Kennedy Space Center and throughout NASA who supported you, who are true American heroes. I was proud to serve with all of you. I was proud to fly some of, with some of you. And I stand here today as a lifetime member of NASA's Astronaut Corps family. I want you to know that everything we're planning for the future from sending humans to an asteroid to sending humans to Mars is only possible because of the breakthroughs and the groundwork that all of you laid over the 30-year absolutely incredible history of the shuttle program and the more than 50 years of human spaceflight. Your accomplishments are amazing. They're history upon which great nations are built. And believe me, we're going to continue in your tradition to break new barriers and reach new frontiers. Our newest group of eight astronaut candidates, four men and four women, who were introduced to the world last week, stand on all of your shoulders. Just as when I got the call in 1980 that I was going to join the NASA Astronaut Corps, they're full of hope, possibility, and pride for the chance to be a part of our nation's great legacy to space exploration. Space Shuttle Atlantis is a critical part of that NASA history. The fourth of our space shuttle, rated space shuttles, Atlantis was delivered to Kennedy in 1985 and immediately became a workhorse of the fleet. She has 33 missions under her belt, including NASA's final shuttle mission that rolled to its final stop here at the Kennedy Space Center on July 21st, 2011. I will never forget the thrill of commanding STS-45 and flying with my shuttle Atlantis crewmates Brian Duffy, Kathy Sullivan, Dave Leitzman, C. Michael Fold, Baron Lichtenberg, and Kirk Fromel. Like all shuttle crews, we work together as a team on some of the cutting edge science of our day. We help scientists on the ground understand what we were undergoing in space. And we were confident that our work would advance our nation and improve life on Earth. While Atlantis has flown her last mission to space, she lives on to fulfill a new and important mission right here on Earth. She'll inspire a new generation of explorers who one day may join us on missions to Mars and other destinations. Not far from here, the Orion crew capsule that will carry them on these missions is in preparation for its, its first test flight next year. On a launch pad, also not far from here, Industry partners are launching cargo to the International Space Station and will once again soon launch astronauts from American soil. I want to congratulate the team here at the Kennedy Visitors Complex for creating the most comprehensive, interactive, and exciting tribute 
to the 30-year phenomenal shuttle program. This exhibit is a powerful reminder of NASA's unmatched accomplishments during more than 50 years of exploration and the great future that lies ahead. With their payload bay doors wide open, Atlantis is literally reaching out with open arms to welcome all visitors, create our unprecedented achievements in space, and inspire a new generation. And now Bill, Rick, Bob, come on up and let's launch this baby. You skipped the part, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. We're fine. <laughs> that's why he has a pilot, he said. You didn't skip any parts up there, did you? No. This, um, <laughs> we're going to do the countdown now, gentlemen. I think you are ready. And the final go at T minus 10 and counting. 10, 9, 8, 7, 